Hello, hello, hello all and welcome to The Good Witch. If you are new, welcome, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. This is your Pisces intuitive tarot reading for the month of September. So, this is going to be a very, very powerful, very, very informative reading for you. There's a very, very special message from the divine for you at the end of this video, all through the video, but especially just stay tuned to the end for me, okay? For you, actually. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment in love because it's all in love. It's all amazing. And even the things that we don't need, want to hear, we need to hear. So let's tune in, tap in, and get to it. We are going to look at your love, your finances, and give you a great message from the divine. This is for Pisces, sun, moon, or rising. Look at where Pisces lands in your chart and then apply it there, okay? Now, please remember to check the description box below. You got all the business stuff out of the way? That's good, let's get it. So, your overall energy for this reading is full moon in Sagittarius. You are laser focused and you need to look at the big, bigger picture. You have this gift of having tunnel vision. A very, very, very powerful gift. This tunnel vision thing is for you because it helps you and it helps you in ways that you need. It helps you get things done. But sometimes when we're going through a tunnel and we're shooting for a particular goal, you'll hit the star, but you'll miss the fact that you're sitting on the moon. So, um, this, it reminds me of a cartoon. I think it was, it's not Aladdin. It's the song, it's a princess and the frog song. Dig a little deeper. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing the princess and the frog song for y'all today. Y'all know some, some months I sing for you, not today. <laughs> but I do need you to dig a little deeper. Look at the bigger picture. We're going to look at your love life and we're going to talk about some things. So you have the universe. You have the adjustment. And you have love in reverse. So as far as your, your love life is giving you the same energy that you're putting into love. Who did this? Okay. The universe is conspiring, as always, to give you exactly what you want. Some of you have called forth a partner multiple times in different bodies. Don't leave yet. I'm not, I'm not completely loony. Let me, let me tie this in for you. You keep ending up dating the same type of person because they are mirror reflections of you or a part of you that you have not healed. You keep drawing the same energy back to you. We're gonna do this in groups. I'm gonna do two groups for a Pisces, a group A and a group B. But that is your overall energy for love. So, cause y'all have different situations. Now group A, you've been very, very creative, had a lot of interference, dealt with your inner childhood issues, tried to focus on the bigger picture and still keep getting stuck. The reason why you still keep getting stuck in bad situations as far as your relationships go is because you're not being fully emotionally available. You're, you, you see the red flags in this person or in these people and you pursue them anyway because there's something about them, that type of energy, that's drawing you to them and you, you know, you keep it up and you keep at it and you keep trying to make it work and you're very, very passionate about it. For some of you, this person is already in a relationship or married and you are just very, very passionate about this person and this individual in this situation 
even though you know it's not going to work and it's not the first time that you've done it. So you're going to have to look at what you're what you're telling the universe, what you're telling God that you want. Yes, your actions are telling God and the universe, but yourself even, what you want. If you're, you're saying I'm dating people in relationships continuously, it means I don't want to be with somebody who only wants to be with me. I want to be in a situation with someone in a relationship. Now, you might be saying, well, I didn't know they were in one when I got with them, but then you found out. Pisces are very, very emotional and it's so easy for you to get emotionally attached, which is why you try to keep your emotions under control. I'm a Pisces moon. I understand that. But we have to get more creative with our thought processes and more deliberate with our dating. Your person is involved in a third party situation, even if there is no sex involved. And for my group A people, they are seeing, talking to, or entertaining someone else because you are emotionally unavailable to them. And this, even if they're like, let's say, okay, they're in a relationship, they're married, you're the side piece. Let's say you're the side piece. They got another side piece. They got a dessert piece. Because between you, whatever their spouse is lacking, you have but you're still not giving them the emotions. So they're not going to leave where they are to be in another situation that's still incomplete. Even they could love your dirty draws. That don't mean they won't clean them. They're going to let you keep them dirty draws and they're going to go look for somebody who has clean draws and try to love them too. So I'm going to tell you what to do and I rarely do that. It is time that you start a clean slate either with this person or a new person because this person, even though they want to be with you, they really don't see a future with you anymore because of the emotional unavailability. At one point they were thinking about ending all interference, all third party situations, everything to be exclusively with you. And now they can't because they realize that they would be cheating on you just like they're cheating on the person that they were with when you met them or that they are currently seeing. So it's kind of like you lose, you'll, you'll lose them the way you got them. Now, if that's not for you and that doesn't feel familiar, we're going to look at group B. Y'all please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment and love. Oh, Lord. Okay, so group B, you have a person in your life that is not stubborn at all. Very, very, very free-spirited, free-flowing, the queen of disc in reverse. They're not focused heavily on finances or stability they are they have a large gemini energy which is very flaky very in and out they're emotionally there they're spiritually there today now tomorrow they might go be a butterfly and be somewhere else um you want to have a truce with this person your situation is different they don't really want to be with anybody else they're just they want to enjoy life they want to enjoy it with you. They have a very, very high, like, lust frequency for you. But you guys have your arguments and it's like, one of you is very, very focused on wealth. You both have lust issues, different types of lust. One of you has a financial lust issue. One of you has a physical lust issue. But this situation is very different from group A because group B, you have the Magnus, meaning they are wish granting, wish fulfilling, want to be and do anything that you want to be and do, even if it causes them to lose themselves. You have a butterfly that's willing to clip its wings to be with you. Now, my question to you is if you are 
pushing this type of behavior on them. Will you enjoy that butterfly when it's a caterpillar? You fell in love with the butterfly and now you don't want it to fly anymore. You want it to be a caterpillar. Then you'll get bored with it, step on it and walk away. Or you won't, you'll just enjoy being a caterpillar and try to push it back into a cocoon so it can become a butterfly again, but that's not how that works. This person is not indecisive and they have decided that they want to be with you, even if that means they can't be with themselves, which is a very dangerous place to be. Because it gives you the majority of the power in the relationship or in the situation. So we are going to be mindful of our words. We're going to be mindful of our actions because this is a very sensitive, intuitive person. So we're going to be very, very mindful and look at the bigger picture of, yes, I need them to focus today, but I'm not going to handle them in such a way that they lose who they are. Because you know at the end of the day that they would do that for you because they've made it very plain. If you make them feel like in order to be with you, they have to clip their own wings, they will. And you don't want that burden on your heart because then you'll feel like, oh, well, you're not the person I fell in love with. Well, honey, you wouldn't allow me to be and still be with you. So the universe is giving you what you want. And if you're saying, I have a butterfly, I want a caterpillar, or I need a moth. You'll get that caterpillar or that moth. And that might not be an order you can send back to the kitchen. That might not be something you can reverse. So what do you do when they become that? Do you leave? Do you stick around and enjoy it for a while and then you go and leave and go about your way and leave them a shell or a different version of who they once were? Or are you gonna have to spend all your time and energy rebuilding them again? Teaching them that it's okay to be them again in order for you to like them, even after you ask them to change. So Pisces, we're gonna be very, very aware of our actions and that is not accusatory at all. And no, it is not your responsibility to make this person self-aware. But you do need to look at the bigger picture of the situation because you're being offered love here for group B. A very, very serious love for group B. Group A, you might want to listen to that again because it was um, very, very specific to a few of you. But this interference and this lose them how you got them. Is something that you need to be aware of before you make any committed decisions. Because even group A has a person in their life that falls into group B that you don't give enough attention to. So we're going to give them some more attention, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment in love. Now let's look at your finances. You get very, you're being very, very emotional about your money right now, but your wishes are being granted and you're fighting off um, some past demons, some things, some fears of loss, some fears of lack, some, some old behaviors are rearing their heads in your finances and you're fighting that off. But right now you have the magnets in love and finances for well, most most of you have a Magnus in love, but all of you have a Magnus in finances, which is basically your ability to fulfill wishes, mostly your own and a few for other people. So what are you going to do with it? It's like you're going to have an opportunity to heal the world or build Neverland Ranch. I could feed the poor for a year 
park and build an amusement park. And you might justify it by saying, well, if I build the amusement park, it'll create a stream of revenue where I could feed the poor forever instead of just a year. This is true. But then you're making the decision to let people starve and die. So those people that would have been fed for that year won't be there by the time you get done building revenue for forever. And once you build that revenue for forever, there'll be another opportunity for you to expand the revenue so you can fix it for starving people. And then you can fix homeless people. You can fix more issues with more money. And that will always be the case. So be aware of the person that you grow to become. Don't be the person that's always trying to grow so much that you forget why you started growing in the first place. Don't become a doctor and be so caught up or a nurse so caught up in making money and seeing as many patients as possible that you forget to be present for your patients that you become a pill passer or let's say you become a musician and you are writing music and you used to write music that healed people and you wanted to make a difference now you just want to write things that sell don't do that because it starts out really heavy and it goes out quickly. <coughs> well, excuse me, y'all. I know that was loud. We got a mic now and that was loud and I apologize. Um, so you're going to make sure you're not just, you're looking at the bigger picture but you're not ignoring the bigger picture. So when you look at this card, for look at the bigger picture, you see the arrow, you see it on the moon, right? So the bigger picture would be the universe. You see all the stars and everything. The moon is a part of galaxies, which is a part of galaxies, which is a part of dimensions, which is a part of the universe, right? And you're the arrow, right? So you're going to save the unit. Don't save the universe while the moon disintegrates. But don't be so focused on what the arrow is pointed at, which is a star, that you forget to see the moon. Okay? I know that's a little heavy. But it's also very, very necessary. So I need you all to be mindful of the picture that you're looking at and make sure you're creating the things that you want to create. So you have some completions of cycles that are coming. You had all the small details working and you're doing everything and to help someone and you're not passionate about it. You're not passionate about the thing that you're doing. You're passionate about getting done with it. It's like you be careful not to forget to, to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. There's nothing wrong with enjoying the journey while you're on your destination, while you're on your path. Don't be so focused on where you're going that you don't see where you are. The same thing about seeing the bigger picture. That tunnel vision is a beast. That tunnel vision will make you lose everything around you when you look up and you're exactly where you want to be with no one or nothing that you want it to be there with. It's like building a mansion for a 10 bedroom mansion for 
all of your family and then by the time you're so focused on building the house that you didn't realize that while building it everybody around you died i know that's dark y'all i'm sorry or moved or whatever makes you less sad so pay attention to the people in the village while you're building the houses i can't keep coming up with analogies i could but we're not but while you're rebuilding the village don't forget about the people that live there because they're living there while you're rebuilding it got it good Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment in love. Um, be aware that you can't have passion and love. They should coincide. If you choose passion over love, you might not get love. But if there is love, you can create passion. So if that helps you make your decision from earlier, good. If you didn't catch it, watch it again. So peace, love, and light. Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, and love. If you need a private reading or you want to hit me up or whatever the case may be, check the description box below. I'm always here for you. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. And thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of yours. Peace, love, and light from the good witch. <laughs>